Hey everyone, Jeff here from Hot Tub Owner HQ. And at this point, I've owned four different hot tubs over the last 15 years or so. So I know a lot about hot tubs. I'm still learning every day and don't claim to be an expert, but I still remember back when I bought that very first hot tub that I knew nothing about. And there were six things in particular, actually there was a bunch of things, but there were really six things that shocked me. Maybe shocked is kind of a clickbaity word, but there were six things that really surprised me that I didn't expect, didn't know about, and wasn't informed about by the hot tub dealership when I bought that first hot tub. So if you're new to hot tubbing, you're about to buy one or you've just bought one, chances are these six things are gonna resonate with you too because they're surprising and they're not what we expect when we buy a hot tub. At least I didn't. So let's get into it. Right out of the gate, the first one was all of the different names, not just for the hot tubs themselves, but all the different terms that I had to learn. But the hot tubs themselves, some people call them hot tubs, some people call them jacuzzis, some people call them spas. And then within that, there were portable hot tubs, there were inflatable hot tubs, there were in-ground hot tubs, there were all these different names. And that's on top of all of the other, the, the chemical names and everything else you kind of had to learn, learn about. And what I've learned over the years that, you know, Jacuzzi is a brand. It was started by the Jacuzzi brothers a long time ago, and they were pretty much the inventors of the current modern day hot tub as we know it. That's just a brand name. That was their last name. So it's kind of the same as like Kleenex or um, you know some other ubiquitous term that we've come to identify by the brand name. So Jacuzzi is just a brand name for a hot tub. Spa often refers to a hot tub like this, but sometimes it can refer to one of those places where you go and you get like a, you know, a mineral bath and a pedicure and facial and other fancy things like that too. So, but for the purposes of this, some people call it a hot tub, some people call it a jacuzzi, and some people call it a spa. It's all the exact same thing. The next thing that really surprised me was how long the hot tub took to fill up. After all, they came, they installed it, and they kind of just went away and left me there to fend for myself. And I ran the garden hose over to it, and I turned the hose on full blast, and I waited. And I waited, and I waited, and I waited some more. And, and you know, for a hot tub like this one, which is about 600 gallons, it can take upwards of four hours to fill up. Could be faster than that. It, it kind of depends upon the rate of the water coming out of your garden hose, how fast it's coming out. I've heard, I haven't tested this, that you can get a garden hose um, attachment that gives you a wider mouth and that supposedly helps fill it up faster. I'm not sure if that's correct, because it seems to me the water's still coming out at the same rate. But at any rate, it can take upwards of four hours to fill up a hot tub, either the first time you fill it up or after you've drained it and you fill it back up again, which by the way, you should be doing about every three months or so. Piggybacking right on that next topic, the next one that really surprised me was how long the water in the hot tub, the new water, took to actually get hot. It took a really, really long time. I do have another video that kind of details exactly how long it takes to heat up, why it can take longer sometimes than other times, and what you can do to speed that process up. I'm going to link to that one down below in the description. You'll also see a card for it at the end of the video. But just know that heating the water actually takes even longer than filling it up. Probably somewhere between three hours, maybe even up to eight hours. And these are the top things that make that affect how long that takes. So the garden hose temperature, in other words, the water temperature coming out of your garden hose, sometimes that can be as low as 50 degrees if it's really cold outside and you live somewhere like Minnesota. Where I live here in Texas, even right now on kind of a mild day here in September, I bet you my water is still at least 70 degrees, maybe even as much as 72. 
which it, what is what it was earlier in the summer when I actually measured the temperature for an earlier video. But that's a big difference between, say, 55 and, say, 72. And a hot tub is going to heat it somewhere around 3, 4 degrees an hour. So if your water is much colder than mine, it's going to take you a whole lot longer for your hot tub to get hot, to fill up with, to get warm. Um, the other factors are the outside ambient air temperature. Filling, uh, uh, heating it in Minnesota in December is going to take a lot longer than heating it in Texas in July. Uh, a few tips though, keep the lid closed and then turn the jets on before you keep the lid closed. The jets are going to kind of keep it circulating through that all important heater tube and it's going to also ensure that there aren't any cold pockets just kind of sitting there. And then the lid is actually going to trap that heat in. In other words, it's going to keep recirculating instead of evaporating into the air. And even if it's a super hot sunny day, you might be tempted to leave the cover off. Don't do that. Keep the lid on. That keeps the heat trapped in the water, which is what you want to speed that process up. Hey everyone, real quick before we get to the next topic, just want to briefly introduce myself. It's Jeff Campbell. The channel is Hot Tub Owner HQ. I also have my website, hottubownerhq.com. Give me that thumbs up, that subscribe button, and the bell notification button too. But now let's keep going. Anyway, the next topic is the, how confusing the chemical aisle was at the store. Whether you're getting it, your chemicals at Home Depot or Walmart, you might be ordering it online. You're probably not ordering it online if it's a brand new hot tub and you have no idea what you're doing. Because you, if you're like me, you're, you, you look at Amazon and you get completely confused. There's just tons and tons of stuff on there. So the first time I had a hot tub, I was definitely going to the store trying to desperately figure out what I needed, what I didn't need, and what all the different chemicals were. There's so many different things, and they're all mixed together with pool chemicals, which are similar, but different. But just know that there's only a few basic things you're going to need to get your hot tub going. You're going to want something to balance the alkalinity and the pH. Often that's going to be a combined product called Spa Up or Spa Down or labeled something very similar to that. Sometimes you'll see things that adjust the pH only, but most of the time a chemical that affects one of those things will affect the other one too. And you're going to need to have chemicals to bring it either up or down depending upon how your water tests. And the first thing you're going to want to do before you do anything is dip a test strip in that water and see what you need to adjust. You never want to add chemicals before you've tested it because you don't know what you need and how much of it you need. The next thing you're going to need is a sanitizer. A sanitizer cleans and sanitizes the water just like the name implies. Some people use chlorine, some people use bromine, and then there's also auxiliary systems that do those that same process. There's a salt water system, there's an ozone generating system, there's a UV light system. 99% of the people on the planet though either use chlorine or bromine and you can either do liquid, tablet, or powder. These days, I prefer, I don't see my floater anywhere, I prefer bromine tablets in a floater. I can just fill it up with a bunch of tablets, set it in the hot tub and kind of forget it. When I get in the hot tub, I'll just set it here on the edge so that it's not bobbing around and bobbing into me. And then I'll just put it back in before I close up shop. Then about once a week, I'll add a chlorine shock. That's a powder. And for the size of my hot tub, I add about a quarter cup of that shock. Again, about once a week. There are non-chlorine shocks, and if, if you're very sensitive with your skin, uh, sensitive to that chlorine smell, you can use a non-chlorine shock no problem. I just find that the chlorine shock gets the water a little cleaner, a little clearer, a little less foam, and things like that. But that's really all that you need in terms of hot tub chemicals. You don't really need a bunch of other stuff unless you have a specific problem, you've Googled it, and that seems like the best solution. But things to adjust pH, alkalinity, sanitizer, and shock are the biggies. So that's what you need to focus on to start with. The next thing that really surprised me was just how hard it was to get the water balanced. Seems like every time I dipped a test strip in, I could never get it right. Something was always way too high, way too low, uh, and it just seemed to take forever 
to get the hot tub chemicals right. And I, I want to be relaxing in my hot tub. I don't want to have to get a chemistry degree. And it seemed very frustrating, very hard to figure out how to do that. So I want to walk you through step by step how I do my adjustments. First, let me get my test strips though, so I can show you. Okay, so this is the brand of test strip that I use. It's called Smart Test by Poolmaster. Has outstanding reviews on Amazon, thousands of reviews in fact. Believe it or not, there is a lot of variation between test strips and how effective they are and how well they measure the chemistry in your water. So I like this one, I trust this one. If you're interested in this one, I do have a link for it down below from Amazon in the description. But the first thing that I do is, before I do anything, is I just take a test strip out, I dip it in, I hold it for about two seconds, I kind of shake the excess water off, and then I simply compare it to the color gauge on the side here. As you can see, my chlorine levels are too high, I mean, bromine in my case. Um, they're, they're, bromine and chlorine are shown on the same scale here though. There's just different numbers for bromine versus chlorine, but the color scale is the same. Then you can see my alkalinity is pretty good. My pH is probably a hair low. So uh, the biggest issue with the bromine, uh, since I use a floater, I did just put new bromine tablets in there last night, but you can adjust the, uh, how much of the water gets in there to mix with the uh, tablets by turning the outside of the floater. I'm gonna do that now just so you can see how that's done. Okay, so if you can see here, there are slots in the floater that allow water to get in there where the tablets are. I could close it all the way off. I don't know if you can see that. Or I, where it was before was about pretty much as far, almost as far open as you could get it. So what, what I wanna do now that I know the chlorine levels are too high is close it almost all the way off. I'm gonna put that back in there and I'm just kinda of gonna let it sit for a little bit. I can also turn the jets on, believe it or not, turning the jets on, that aeration that happens from that, actually will raise the pH. And it's gonna help kinda, maybe if I leave the lid off, uh, which you should most of the time when you're adding chemicals to your, your water, that'll help uh, kinda aerate the, the water a little bit, maybe release some of that chlorine from the bromine tablets into the air. Um, but it will also raise the pH, which if you remember, the pH level was just a little bit low. Now, I do have products like this one, pH decreaser, and then this one's called pH up. I normally also have products called spa up and spa down that I'm out of. Um, so when I want to raise the alkalinity and the pH, I'll use one of those spa products. But if I need to affect more the pH than the alkalinity, I'll use these. Uh, they do not typically make products designed just to raise or lower alkalinity. I don't know why that is. It seems like they should. The two are hand in hand though. Alkalinity measures the ability of the water to neutralize acid, whereas pH measures how acidic or alkaline your water is. So they are definitely related and any product that affects one is definitely gonna affect the other. Don't, I don't want you to stress. After a while, balancing your hot tub's water becomes very second nature. You're not gonna have to spend hours figuring it out. Trust me, you will get it right. You'll get in a groove. You'll figure out what products that you like that are easy and affordable and that seem to work with your particular water chemistry. The water the chemistry coming out of what your garden hose has is probably different than mine. So what works for me might not work for you. But after a while of trial and error, you're going to figure out and you're going to get in a groove and it's going to be second nature. Trust me. So if you're in that, you know, that initial phase where you're just really frustrated, you will work through that. So keep going. I promise you it gets easier. The last thing that surprised me, all of the little things um, drove me crazy too, because after I figured out the water chemistry, I thought that I'm good. But no, there's filter maintenance, there's cover maintenance, there are things like biofilm, which I didn't even know what that was the first couple of hot tubs I owned. Um, but it's basically bacteria buildup inside the plumbing that you never see. But if you have it, it renders your sanitizer and your shock almost completely ineffective. Um, and so you'll find yourself having to add more and more and more um, sanitizer and shock 
just to keep the levels up and sometimes even that doesn't work. So using a biofilm cleaner uh, when you do change the water again should be about every three months or so is a great thing to do. I do it every time now just to kind of clean it out, get rid of it. It's not very expensive. I have another video that details that if you want to check that out. Uh, just search on YouTube for a Hot Tub Owner HQ biofilm and I'm sure it'll be the first one that comes up. Uh, but then, uh, you know, scum. A lot of times you would see scum build up right around the water line. Uh, I didn't know what that was from and what that was caused. And, and you know, honestly, those things were caused by poor water chemistry and poor filter maintenance. Uh, the first hot tub I owned, I don't think I ever did anything to the filters, which of course is a huge mistake. You should be rinsing your filter. I have two in mind, but you might just have one, but you should be rinsing them in a kitchen sink with a sprayer about every three or four weeks or so, and then doing a deep chemical soak about uh, every three months or so. And then every one to two years is probably a good time to replace that. If you're really on top of your water chemistry and your filter maintenance, then you can probably stretch that to two years. If you do occasionally forget those things and aren't very on top of it, then changing them about every one year is probably better for you because when they're, the filters are dirty and filthy and clogged and got calcium scale built up on them, it makes your equipment have to work a whole lot harder, which is gonna shorten the lifespan span of your equipment. The hot tub equipment can all be replaced, but it's not cheap. So you want that equipment to last as long as possible. So all of that was stuff that, you know, I just didn't understand. I didn't understand that uh, high pH can lead to foam in your hot tub. And so there were just so many little things that used to drive me crazy that I just didn't know. And again, I have videos on quite a few of these things. I also have a ton of articles on my website. So if you want to dive in deeper on any of those things, just look for a video or go to my website and, and search to see if I, I cover it. If I don't cover it, definitely leave me a comment down below. I'd love to help you out and get an, either an article going or a vi YouTube video going. But for now, we're going to wrap things up. It's Hot Tub Owner HQ, Jeff Campbell, and I'll see you in the next video.